today we shall discuss about some of the issues and the future directions of enzyme technology uh, that we are likely to face in near future. Uh, so far we have been talking about the status of enzyme technology as is being practiced in the industries as, as far as the application of enzymes are concerned in different sectors of their application. Now, the issues that I will be talking today are essentially ones which are still posing challenge and are restricted to laboratory investigations so far and it is likely that uh, some of them in a very short time will come out as a industrial uh, processing concepts. Now, the first issue that I want to uh, draw your attention is, is the bioprocessing with cofactor linked enzymes and as I mentioned earlier that uh, a large number of enzymes that are known are essentially mediated through coenzymes or cofactors as we know and uh, most of the applications that we talked uh, earlier they are related to only hydrolytic enzymes which do not require cofactors of course, with the sole exception of glucose isomerase which is an isomerase and uh, does not require cofactor, it also does not require cofactor. Now, uh, the large number of cofactor linked enzymes therefore, open a big challenge uh, to the uh, industry or to the scientist who are concerned with the uh, sort of diversification of uh, application of enzymes and a large number of, now of course, the, uh, the basic uh, uh, motivation or rationale for the use of cofactor linked enzymes comes from a living cell. The function of a living cell in which a number of cofactor linked enzymes are operational in various metabolic pathways which are used by cells for carrying out uh, their various catabolic as well as anabolic reactions. Now, the basic concept in a living cell essentially when it comes to cofactor linked enzymes uh, retains to cycling of the cofactor between two enzyme catalyzed reactions and the two enzyme catalyzed reactions are coupled in a cell in such a way that the, the cofactor which is used in one reaction in one direction is recycled back through the another uh, through the another reaction uh, with which it is linked and the total equilibrium is in favor of the, con the uh, I mean the desired intermediate that are required to be synthesized uh, by the cell. Now, uh, just to mimic that as far as their industrial application is concerned, the issue is restricted to mainly three uh, I mean issues. One is that the coenzyme and the enzyme must be retained in the reactor. We have seen in earlier our deliberations where we have talked about immobilized enzymes, the enzyme can be retained in the reactor and used over a long period of time. A similar concept has to be developed for coenzyme retention in the reactor although it is little more difficult in the sense that while enzymes provide you a large molecular size as well as a number of functional uh, uh, groups on the molecule which can be used uh, for coupling to a matrix where the enzyme uh, where a coenzyme is essentially a small molecular weight compound not such a large molecule and also the number of uh, functional groups available on the molecule are very restricted. So, exactly the same concept may not be applied, but still uh, one need to retain the coenzyme so that it is not consumed during the reaction and uh, what the, the basic concept to uh, retain the enzyme essentially is, uh, is as listed here use of the water soluble polymer bound coenzyme. For retention of the coenzyme we use essentially instead of a, a small molecular weight compound coenzyme we use a water soluble polymer bound coenzyme and of course, you can be because for binding purposes we add a another functional group which can be used for coupling to a water soluble polymer which may not be essentially present on the coenzyme original coenzyme as it is and therefore, you need a analog that means, when I say analog I am referring to that there is some structural modification chemical structural modification, but the coenzyme function the, the role of coenzyme is uh, retained by the molecule. The second issue is regeneration of the coenzyme. Now, the re regeneration of coenzyme like in a living cell can be carried out by coupling two enzyme catalyzed reaction as you see here. Now, in a 
but in a let us say membrane reactor in which a reaction has to be carried out I have just illustrated a general uh, redox reaction A H plus B going to A plus B H there is a oxidation of A H and reduction of B and this can be done by two enzymes uh, two enzymes one of them uh, your oxidizer A and produces your A uh, your uh, B A oxidizer A H and produces A whereas the other one reduces B of course using the same cofactor uh, in the reverse direction and such a thing and if this coenzyme what we are talking about let us say here if it is NAD now this has to be coupled to a polymer bound polymer so that the enzyme is not the coenzyme is not lost during the use. Then of course I think another uh, important feature is that the product need to be separated to drive the coupled reaction and of course the um, separation of product is mediated by using of a membrane reactor in which the high molecular weight enzyme as well as the coenzyme which is now made to be to be high molecular weight is retained in the reactor and thereby the product can be separated from the reaction mixture and the reaction can be driven in the desired direction. Now, just to illustrate the point with one of the examples I have given although I mean uh, there is lot of chemistry involved because different people have proposed different kind of chemical reactions. But just to illustrate the point of course, uh, I am not interested to uh, I mean give you detailed chemistry, but it is just as a concept. For example, here you take a water soluble polymer polyacrylamide, this is a water soluble polymer. This is derivatized by hydrogen hydrate to polyacrylamide hydroxide and this polyacrylamide hydroxide then is coupled to a uh, cofactor a coenzyme NAD, NAD which is derivatized by uh, in the form of carboxymethyl NAD. So, therefore, a carboxymethyl group is generated here and carboxymethyl NAD is then activated by carbodimide the familiar reaction which you are familiar uh, with the carboxylic group containing enzymes by activation by uh, carbodimide and therefore, you get an activated uh, coenzyme molecule. A carboxymethyl which is a NAD analog is activated using carbodimide under acidic conditions to give you an activated NAD. You can call it NAD activated. Now, this activated NAD is then coupled with the polyacrylamide hydrazide and this on coupling gives you a water soluble large molecular weight coenzyme analog which is functionally compatible with the uh, dehydrogenase with which we want to use and similar systems can be I mean sort of uh, designed for use. Now, a typical reaction setup of course, is it, it describes a typical laboratory setup in which a ester cell type of ultrafiltration system has been used and uh, your A is a feed reservoir, it is passed through a, uh, a ultra the, uh, a valve which can either direct which can either direct the reaction vessel either to the reservoir or to the cylinder for pressure. It can have both the directions and of course, the reaction can be carried out at high pressure and, and the and the reaction the reactor contains your uh, uh, the polymer bound coenzyme the substrate and the two enzymes. Now, when the reaction goes on and that means, what essentially we are saying that we are carrying out reaction in a CSTR and in the when the reaction goes on the uh, product formed is uh, left out I mean send out in through the as a permeate in the ultrafiltration cell. The enzyme and the coenzyme polymer bound coenzyme is retained in the reactor and uh, the substrate can be fed continuously by concentration by pressure gradient in the reactor and the vessel and the reactor can be continued over a long period of time. Now, at least two of the reactions uh, which have been carried out in such a reactor is one is of course, continuous oxidation of ethanol using permeabilized yeast cells. Now, the yeast cells when they are permeabilized that means, the lipid on the membrane is dissolved by a solvent and it becomes freely permeable uh, to various substrates that means, it has lost its permeability barriers for substrate uh, and product uh, in, uh, exchange and they are used and in fact, it has been shown to give 
some kind of enzymatic activity which can be called as NAD, NADH oxidase something like that which oxidizes the reduced NAD into ox oxygen uh, along with some like an oxidase activity and which generates hydrogen peroxide and this hydrogen peroxide to break down requires peroxidase or else it will inactivate the original enzyme alcohol hydrogenase. So, in the same reactor system if you use ethanol polyacryl hydrogen coupled to NAD and peroxidase you can get a net conversion oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde and uh, the, the, the profiles here shown uh, they give you the profile now the kind of reaction progress this is in reaction progress in hours in the first profile there is no peroxidase added which essentially means as soon as the reaction starts the hydrogen peroxide produced inactivates the alcohol dehydrogenase and the reaction goes back to original no further reaction takes place. Only when you add hydrogen peroxide here hydrogen peroxide or peroxidase has been added you get a reaction going on to a sizable extent until the time again because of some reasons uh, the either the enzyme has leaked out and the I mean your uh, the substrate con this alcohol concentration again builds up and there is no reduction. And in the third case uh, the system was improved by treatment of the cells the alcohol dehydrogenase cells containing cells by glutaldehyde which essentially aimed at was aimed at to fix the uh, alcohol dehydrogenase onto some cellular organelles and thereby making it almost in the form of a immobilized enzyme so that it does not leak out and you can see the clear advantage that the reaction is extended to over a large period of time comparatively and but again still it goes and basically what I am trying to show is that although the system can be demonstrated for 8 hours 10 hours but still there are some problems which are not still so far understood what happens in the case of cofactor cycling. Essentially the concentration here is very very small of uh, NAD and therefore the cycling is taking place there is no doubt but because you are you are ultimately you have reduced the concentration let us say from 100 millimolar uh, to an extent of about 70 kilo millim millimolar which means 30 millimolar concentration has been reduced which essentially means that in a NAD concentration of let us say 10 millimolar 700 cycles have taken place. But ultimately the cycling is not continuous over a long period of time and that is still an inherent problem. A similar profile essentially in the case of uh, conversion of pyruvate to alanine uh, using uh, your same polyacrylamide hydrozide coupled NADH and, uh, and your formate dehydrogenase and alcohol dehydrogenase or oh sorry alanine dehydrogenase. Uh, formate dehydrogenase and alanine dehydrogenase as I mentioned the use of formate dehydrogenase has an advantage that the reaction products are carbon dioxide and water which can be easily stripped off, but you have to provide formate as a substrate along with it and therefore and again you see here the, uh, the circles essentially indicate no glutal dehyde treatment and this is the performance with the triangles with glutaldehyde which indicate very clearly indicates that this downfall is prevented and the enzyme is available over a longer period of time and reaction continues. But again the reaction is not really for over long, although the data for beyond 16 hours have not been shown here, but again I think within a couple of hours definitely not more than 24 hours it is able to stay and the reaction reactor performance drops down. The second issue was uh, to recall bioprocessing of unnatural substrates. Now here we had uh, highlighted that uh, there are a number of enzyme reactions which although give you a lot of benefits very favorable concepts in terms of their specificity in terms of the uh, desired nature of the product they produce in the right uh, stereoisomeric form. But still the problem is also in relation to uh, the narrow specificity gives you a much more problem and uh, if you look at the two reactions that I referred earlier uh, that is your uh, conversion of fumaric acid to malic acid and also malic acid to aspartic acid both reactions involve addition of water and ammonia respectively onto a carbon carbon double bond 
and give you the, the corresponding products malic acid and aspartic acid. Both are the products which are which find application uh, in the uh, food or related industry. Uh, malic acid directly is used in uh, most of the beverages as the acidulant and aspartic acid of course, the bulk use is essentially in uh, your synthesis of aspartame and but again the quantities required are not very large. On the other hand, if you look at uh, similar reactions which are of commercial value and in large quantities and which of course, they are just representative reactions, there are many more reactions which come under this category. You see lactic acid to acrylic acid, a removal of a water molecule from lactic acid which is reverse of what fumarase does and now this reaction is of in immense value and if it can be carried out, I think it can serve a great purpose. Then similarly, extraction of water from ethanol to give you ethylene or dehydration of ethanol. Then again reduction uh, extraction of water from 1,3-butane diol uh, to produce 1,3-butadiene which is a substrate or the uh, uh, monomer for synthetic rubber. Now, all the three substrates here which are listed here are essentially bulk fermentation products. If they can be uh, sort of transformed enzymatically using an enzyme something similar to that of fumarase or a modified fumarase, probably one can have a very uh, significant uh, I mean sort of uh, uh, impact on the enzyme technology. And of course, uh, such efforts essentially are uh, uh, I mean at least drawing attention of people, so that we can design enzymes uh, at least enzyme reactions to meet the requirements. Essentially, if you look at I mean in general, uh, although the enzymes catalyze very desirable chemical transformations like you know uh, malic acid to or fumaric acid to malic acid or malic acid to aspartic acid, but often they convert only substrate that have limited commercial interest. And in fact, uh, if these enzymes can be used for those conversions which have very varied and very large commercial interest, I think the impact will be much greater and uh, one can really be uh, uh, fascinated with the enzyme industrial applications of enzymes. Other feature was uh, the people tend to accept the enzyme names very literally and in absolute sense. When we name glucose oxidase, we int interpret that glucose is a substrate with oxygen as the ultimate electron acceptor for oxidation of glucose. Similarly, galactose oxidase also gives the same concept, but essentially in practice these enzymes are not so uh, well so highly specific. On the first in the first side we saw that some of the enzymes which are of industrial value are very specific, they have a very narrow specificity and we need to broaden their specificity. On the other hand we have certain enzymes which are broadly specific which are not very narrowly specific, but we are not able to use them for a variety of reactions. So, both the, both the things have to be really I mean uh, tackled so as to be able to apply use enzymes on a larger perspective. Like for example, glucose oxidase can use a large number of electron acceptors other than oxygen, which can be then uh, reduced at the expense of glucose, it means glucose will get oxidized and the corresponding uh, electron acceptor will get reduced and one can uh, carry out a number of uh, organic chemical transformations. Similarly, galactose oxidase another enzyme which is known to uh, catalyze the classical reaction of galactose to the corresponding aldehyde by oxygen, but uh, essentially as a matter of fact this galactose oxidase is, is a very broad uh, applicable enzyme and it really acts on uh, on a variety of aliphatic and aromatic alcohols and to give rise to corresponding aldehydes and these aldehydes are essentially I mean the conversion of alcohols to aldehydes oxidation reactions are of great significance in perfumery and cosmetic industry and a number of reactions can be catalyzed. And of course, one thing must be must be sure that the rates on different substrates might be different. Of course, they can today with the understanding of site directed mutagenesis, it is possible to change the substrate specificity and also improve the catalytic functional rates. So, the message essentially is that in addition to the natural reactions catalyzed by enzymes, there is always a range of non natural reactions that are of commercial interest. 
The challenge is to unfold and link these non-natural reactions for the enzyme available in bulk quantities. I think another feature here which I have uh, stated here, uh, I think we must pay first attention to those enzymes which are already available in bulk quantities. Because again you, one you may like to I mean say for example, uh, look at a particular biotransformation, but if the enzyme is not available in bulk quantities at a low cost, the application may be inhibitory. May, may not be feasible. So, best, best is to initially look at those enzymes which are available in large quantities and one can only diversify their application to a large range of non-natural reactions which are of commercial value and of course, this will require a very clear understanding of their reaction mechanism. Because presently those reactions are being carried out by chemical transformations and taking making use of the, uh, the reaction mechanism one can uh, uh, probably uh, think of certain uh, unconventional reactions. The third uh, uh, the third uh, uh, interesting uh, area was which I was uh, wanted to talk about bioorganic synthesis using enzymes in micro aqueous medium. Now, normally we understand that enzymes are opera operable in aqueous medium. And the basic reason is that a large number of non-covalent interactions that we are familiar with the enzyme structure are through interaction of the enzyme molecule or the enzyme protein with the water molecule. And water is a requisite uh, species in the case of maintenance of a, a conformation of an enzyme molecule and to carry out the chemical or biochemical reaction. But essentially the major uh, concept and of course, such a uh, perception in the earlier days was essentially based on a very uh, limited understanding of the enzyme structure and function. And the limited uh, understanding was that people had looked at the stability of the enzyme in water miscible solvents, say for example, acetone which is still used for precipitation of enzyme proteins, it makes aggregates and precipitates, dioxane which are water miscible solvents and beyond a certain concentration of these solvents in the bulk medium inactivates the enzyme. Now, so people understood that okay, no enzymes cannot be used in the uh, non-polar uh, environment which ultimately proved wrong in at least uh, for the last 20 years and people have looked at uh, a number of water immiscible solvents which are known to uh, keep enzyme in a very stable conformation along with the maintenance of the enzyme conformation because the quantity of water required for interaction with the enzyme protein is a very small bound water molecule around the uh, sort of uh, uh, external surface of the uh, molecule and which is retained and which is not so easy even to remove by normal dehydration methods. Unless you subject it to chemical treatments you cannot really remove it by conventional drying methods the bound water present in the enzyme molecule. And therefore, uh, in the recent years very big uh, of course, a number of applications have already emerged here, but again on a limited scale and probably the scope it offers is much much larger than it is being practiced today. Some of the advantages of organic media uh, for biocatalysis are one is many of the reactions which require non-polar substrates lipids mainly are very difficult to be carried out in aqueous medium because they are not soluble or the concentrations that will be soluble will be very small. So, if you want to carry out those reactions in high concentrations you need a non-polar bulk medium and they can be the substrate can be dissolved and then they can be used in the uh, for enzymatic catalysis. The another major advantage is the Hydrolysis can be catal can catalyze synthetic reactions. That means, in the absence of water, for hydrolysis, which essentially require water as a second substrate, all hydrolysis will require for hydrolysis reactions water as a reactant. If the water is stripped off or is not present, then the reaction can, can go in the reverse direction, and instead of hydrolysis, synthesis can be used. And in fact, it is in this area a very significant applications have emerged and. Uh, uh, where the ester synthesis has been carried out even commercially in fact, for some of the very high value products uh, and particularly more importantly for resolution of racemic mixtures 
which we know that the enzymes are able to recognize one of the isomers, the resolution can be carried out in the case of a chemically synthesized racemic mixture. Then many of these can be used for modification of enzyme specificity in as far as uh, the reactions are concerned in the organic medium. It has been also seen that uh, when you subject an enzyme molecule into a anhydrous organic solvent, the enzyme becomes very rigid. If you put the enzyme protein and enzyme molecule into aqueous medium in a buffer, the molecule is highly mobile. It interacts with the water molecules freely and it is very mobile, but when you put in a organic non-polar medium, its mobility is drastically reduced. In fact, uh, one of the I mean uh, major uh, uh, scientists working in this area, he has even called as rocks in the organic solvent. I mean the molecule becomes so rigid that the structure is very rigid and its uh, sort of uh, deactivation is impossible. The molecule becomes rigid, it does not deactivate, it retains its activity and that is one of the advantages. And of course, during this rigidification, lot of modification in the substrate specificity also occurs and this has been noted in many cases. And of course, uh, coincidentally bulk of the studies in use of enzymes in the nonpolar medium has been in the area of uh, hydrolases mainly lipase and proteases. They are the two class of enzymes lipases and proteases which have been extensively studied for variety of reactions. I think I will illustrate you with some of the examples. Then of course, the reduction of side reactions catalyzed by water when water is not present any reaction catalyzed by water is uh, inhibited, then higher stability both thermostability and no problems with the microbial contamination because the solvent itself will act as a um, sort of a preservative and will not allow any microbial contamination to take place and the enzyme can be stored over a long period of time. Even operational stability is improved as I mentioned that the conformation become very rigid, it is not possible to uh, alter it during reaction, the mobility is lost. Then of course, another major important factor is better integration with the chemical steps in a synthetic sequence. Many of the uh, where you want to use enzyme as a part of a sequence of reactions in an organic chemical synthesis where the substrate is coming already dissolved in an organic solvent, you can always integrate enzymatic reaction in the sequence of steps. Otherwise, it was difficult earlier because if the let us say substrate is coming in the uh, in the in this in the solution form in an organic solvent, you need to remove the organic solvent, put it into water medium, and then carry out the reaction, which is practically not feasible, but which can be made feasible if you use the advanced exam enzymes in the organic medium. Now, some of the uh, alternative ways in which enzymes can be used in the organic solvents are shown here. Now, if you look at the first one, the A. It is a homogeneous system containing individual enzyme molecules, water and water miscible organic solvent. I mean typical example is acetone water mixture. You take ethanol water mixture, put the enzyme carry out the reaction. Of course, such a system practically is not very very attractive because as I mentioned they tend to inactivate the enzyme because water miscible solvents often tend to disturb extract the, uh, the bound water layer of the enzyme and thereby the conformation is disturbed. The second is the use of enzymes in two phase systems an organic and a water two phase system and where the enzyme essentially is present in the aqueous phase, the substrate is present in the uh, non aqueous phase make a micro make an emulsion by agitation or the use of a surfactant and then carry out the reaction bring the enzyme and the substrate in close proximity and even carry out. The C the third uh, I mean, uh, configuration is the enzyme immobilized on water containing porous particles surrounded by organic solvents. That means, you use a hydrophilic support and the hydrophilic support will contain the enzyme particles immobilized along with some water molecules dispersed around it and the whole particle is then immersed as shown in a magnified way here. The, uh, the enzyme particles which are hydrophilic contain both the, uh, the water molecules around the enzyme and they are suspended in the bulk organic medium. The shaded portion indicates the organic medium 
and the blank period, the blank spaces are indicated by water medium and the enzyme particle are shown as marked E. The fourth uh, configuration is the mobilization of the enzyme particle on a hydrophobic matrix where there is no water present in the proximity of the uh, enzyme molecule and it is a hydrophobic matrix and uh, the enzyme is I mean sort of immobilized in a hydrophobic patch and uh, it is suspended then in the organic solvent. The fifth one is solid enzyme particles uh, suspended directly into you take enzyme particle dry it and suspend it into solvent and because they are not soluble they will tend to form lumps aggregates and that is what these aggregates are shown and but they can be used to carry out the reaction. Then the sixth one is that you make rubber reverse micelles by use of a surfactant you take uh, uh, your in the micro emulsion form and in inside the reverse micelle you have the enzyme entrapped in the water cells that means the enzyme experiences an atmosphere which is hydrophilic in nature, but the uh, the whole uh, reverse micelle is surrounded by the organic solvent. This is the enzyme entrapped in the reverse micelle. Uh, reverse micelle just like a, a water in oil emulsion and where why uh, you have your enzyme entrapped within you see in the reverse micelle the, uh, the uh, empipathic molecules they make a structure whereby all the uh, you know tails hydrophobic tails they extrude outwards uh, towards the bulk organic solvent and the uh, the, uh, the polar uh, heads are all surrounded are all, all made into a, a small network and within which the enzyme particle is trapped and the some water is also entrapped within the cell and therefore the enzyme remains stable almost as if it is in it is experiencing an aqueous uh, phase but essentially the whole particle as a micelle as a particle is uh, immersed in the organic phase. Then you have the last uh, configuration in which enzyme is modified by chemical modification so as to be made water uh, sorry uh, soluble in the non aqueous phase. I mean one of the uh, well known method reported method is uh, modification of coupling modification of enzyme by coupling to polyethylene glycol. Now if you couple polyethylene glycol the whole enzyme molecule becomes soluble in a non aqueous phase and then it can be put into a uh, organic medium and uh, uh, of course uh, the then it works almost like a soluble enzyme but in non aqueous phase. But again during covalent modification of this enzyme you lose, lose lot of activity and there might be some change in the conformation so as to alter the substrate specificity in the process. Now if you look at uh, some kind of a uh, the structural understanding of the enzyme what happens when we mobilize either on a hydrophilic or a hydrophobic. Now most of the enzymes in organic phase are essentially used in immobilized form. Now if you look at here this is a free soluble enzyme as I mentioned earlier the enzyme molecule essentially is surrounded by an essential water layer and this water layer is essential for the enzyme conformation and activity. Now in the when the bulk solvent is water and the continuous phase is water there is no disturbance on this uh, uh, surrounding layer and the enzyme remains stable for a reasonable period of time of course uh, I mean due to thermochemical reasons it might get inactivated but for some time it remains. In. Now when you mobilize the enzyme onto a solid matrix let us say a polymeric matrix it could be hydrophilic or hydrophobic matrix you generate an interface with the bulk medium and uh, the, the polymeric matrix is surrounding the your uh, uh, the essential water layer which is maintained during the reaction. So which the, is bulk, the bulk is water? No, bulk here is uh, 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 your uh, organic solvent. And here it was water. Here it was water. And in the third case is a reverse micelle. Here also you have an interface which consists of hydrophobic tails. The, 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 uh, I mean the, fat, the fatty acid or whatever lipid molecule you have used for making the micelle. Now they are arranged there the hydrophilic uh, heads are sort of diverted inside which form a structure and the tails are extruding outside and of course then you have a uh, uh, you disperse it through a use of a surfactant 
and uh, you have an interface here consisting mainly of the hydrophobic tails which remains very stable in the organic medium. Only problem although this provides a very neat system for carrying out and reactions and enzymatic reactions in organic phase the reverse micellar system. The only problem is the recovery of the product after the reaction is over from the system because that means recovery of the product means you need to disrupt the micelle, reform the micelle. So, the reaction cannot be really carried out in a continuous mode and that causes severe problem essentially operational problems. But otherwise as a system if you look at I think this provides you an ideal system because it gives you a very large interface. It gives you essentially a, a hydrophobic interface which can remain stable in the ionic milieu and also enzyme is very stable because it is experiencing the aqueous environment. Now the important parameters for the enzyme reactions in organic solvents are essentially the source and the presentation of the enzyme as I mentioned the variety of forms in which the enzyme can exist either as a free enzyme, immobilized enzyme, soluble conjugate that is PEG linked enzymes or in micro emulsion form either of the way that is one parameter and one need to look at that which uh, kind of a form uh, of the enzyme gives you the best results. Then the choice of solvent is another feature. It has been noted in most cases that the uh, solvents which are relatively more non-polar are better suited for carrying out enzymatic reaction mainly because of their lack of interaction with the essential water layer on the enzyme molecule. In fact, people have defined uh, as regard the choice of solvent is concerned a parameter what they call as log p, where p is the partitioning coefficient of the solvent between a particular solvent and octanol, octanol considering to be the extreme non-polar uh, medium and the partitioning coefficient of that solvent between water and octanol is the p value and the log p value indicates the higher the log p value means it is more non-polar and essentially higher the log p value uh, indicates a better suited uh, solvent for enzyme catalysis. Because they do not interact with the essential water layer on the enzyme molecule because of their non-polar nature and therefore the, the enzyme structure is maintained. Then I think a very important factor is amount of water present. I mean for all the, almost all reactions you know when they when we come to carry out carry them out in organic solvent we also need a very small quantity of water which plays a key role in the catalytic function of the enzyme. Now essentially uh, it is a question of debate whether this amount of water required is to maintain the essential water layer in equilibrium or there are some other catalytic functions which require water molecules by the enzyme. Because so far if you look into reaction mechanisms of enzymes, excepting for maintaining the enzyme structure, water has not been seen to play any role. But once if we say that you have a, a very high log p value of the water sol solvent which has no miscibility with the water, it will not disturb the essential water layer, but still a small quantity of water is required in the organic solvents to maintain the catalytic function and this can be there are number of approaches which has been made to provide that small quantity of water and also to strip the water produced in the reaction. When you talk of hydrolysis being used in the reverse direction for synthetic purposes water will be produced and this water need to be essentially removed. On the other hand there is the optimum water concentration which are required, but when water is produced water has to be removed rather than being added. Then of course pH is another feature. But as you will appreciate that when you carry out enzyme reaction in an organic solvent the role of pH becomes limited in the sense that the as, the as, we, as we saw earlier the effect of pH on enzyme in enzyme kinetics the major role was ionization of the amino acid residues in the enzyme protein. Now an organic solvent a non-polar solvent will not really allow ionization to take place and therefore pH theoretically must not play any role. But the role of pH in the case of enzyme reaction in organic solvents has a different connotation and the connotation is that it has been reported by some workers that enzymes unlike many other small molecular weight chemical compounds possess a memory. 
with respect to certain physical features for say for example pH. Now you see for bring, for dispersing the enzyme into a ionic solvent you are starting from an enzyme which is already dispersed in some no, polar solvent some aqueous medium and whatever pH was of that medium the enzyme retains that pH in the memory and the functional aspect of the enzyme uh, when it is transferred to uh, your uh, uh, nonpolar medium remains at the same pH. So, essentially you can make uh, uh, different enzyme preparations starting from initial pH in the water medium which have different functional capabilities and by changing the enzyme memory uh, in with respect to pH. Similarly, temperature and of course, nature of substrate also are important parameters just and they have the similar features as we saw in the case of your uh, water in aqueous medium. Just to illustrate one of the reaction system which uh, we did some work here in IIT itself and a, the enzyme reactor system which were developed here and used for a number of reactions which I have skipped uh, is consist of a stirred reactor in which a silicon tubing is dispersed into the organic uh, phase and silicon tubing essentially while it is non porous to most of the substrates in the product, what is porous to water vapors. And what we do, do through silicon tubings, we some we, we sort of recirculate a saturated salt solution, which is known to have a definite water activity. In fact, even in the case of uh, humidifiers and all that, for calibration of the humidifiers, we use saturated salt solutions. And each salt, when you make a saturated salt solution, has a definite relative humidity. And those salts are circulated so as to maintain a constant water activity in the reactor. And you can control water activity. And that means essentially this uh, saturated salt solution if more water is produced will take up water and when water gets depleted it will provide it will act almost like a water buffer just like a buffer for uh, salt uh, acids and bases this acts like a, a buffer and one can control water activity in a reaction system in organic reaction system uh, in the and you can carry out the reaction at a constant water activity. Of course, a number of enzyme catalyzed reactions have been reported like lipases for ester synthesis, interesterifications, transesterifications, resolution of racemic mixtures because each enzyme has a specificity towards one of the isomers. So, enzymes can be the, the substrates can be resolved into the respective uh, isomers. Proteases for peptide synthesis, oxidases for variety of reactions for example, cholesterol to cholesterol, butanol to butanaldehyde phenyl phenol to phenol formaldehyde resins, cresol to orthoquinone and ethanol to hydrogen peroxide. Even transferases have been used in organic medium for sucrose to leaven a polymer and glucose to fructose isomerization again uh, this has been shown to shift the equilibrium constant uh, from 50 percent or equivolar in the favor of fructose while when we use in the non aqueous phase. Another uh, the last uh, feature which I like to share is synthetic enzymes and molecular imprinting. Now, essentially we know that the, the enzymatic catalytic function has two key roles. One is binding of the substrate and then certain catalytic function group. So, what we need essentially in the case of a synthetic enzyme is that we must have a kind of a, a large molecule with the cavity. So, that the substrate of definite size can fit into it and mimic a binding process. The other is in the proximity of the cavity there must be some functional groups which can do catalysis and of course, we know that uh, the enzymes also follow the same kind of reaction mechanisms as chemical catalysts do all acid base catalysis, covalent catalysis or uh, I mean your uh, proximity effects and all those are experienced in enzymatic reactions and the similar system the similar concepts are being used to synthesize large molecules to mimic the catalytic functions. In fact, one of the most successful I mean attempt has been to use uh, cyclodextrins. Now, the cyclodextrins are essentially uh, cyclic molecules with 6, 7 and 8 uh, glucose moieties coupled together in a starch I mean uh, that means alpha 1, 4 glucose had linkage. If you degrade starch you will get dextrins and if these dextrins assume that if they are instead of linear molecules they are cyclic molecules we call them cyclodextrins. And the alpha, beta, gamma cyclodextrins are essentially 6, 7 and 8 glucose molecules 
linked in the cyclic form. Now, the, the peculiar feature of this is that they makes uh, this uh, the, the cyclic molecules a cavity of definite size in which you can retain the definite molecules and these cyclodextrins are being used to uh, attach by covalent coupling uh, some of the chemical uh, groups which can catalyze the reaction. And if you look at the cavity of the cyclodextrin is of course, almost of this kind is almost like a tapered cylinder uh, and on the surface then they attach a number of functional groups. Essentially the same functional groups which are known to be possessed by of course, this is for example, a chymotrypsin analog. I mean they have tried to mimic the activity of chymotrypsin, they have named it also benzyme and the enzyme the, the some of the functional groups are covalently coupled which are functional in the case of uh, catalysis and such a complex is called a synthetic enzyme. And therefore, uh, I mean such many such molecules are today in like I mean likelihood of coming out, uh, but of course, so far uh, not many enzymes synthetic enzymes are available which can carry out uh, diverse uh, functions as the normal natural uh, catalyst do. Mm -hmm.